Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another charging site review. Uh, I have a real hot wire here for you, well a real free wire. Uh, I'm here at the free wire charger in Lodi, California and uh, you know I decided to, to swing by, I was sort of in the area and I wanted to check it out because Freewire, uh, they're attempting to do something where they use like a battery backup system uh, to allow lower input power and install higher power DC fast chargers, uh, really without the demand fee and without a high power grid connection. Now, this one I think is just sort of an experiment that they did. Uh, they put just one here in Lodi and uh, it's off of Highway 99, a fairly uh, busy highway in uh, Central California. And then this really ties everything together. This is basically right in the middle of the state and uh, just south of Sacramento. Uh, eastbound, westbound traffic will pass through here uh, as well as northbound, southbound. So it's a pretty busy area, just off the freeway, really easy to get to. Uh, the charger itself is rated at 120 kilowatts, but if you look at the placard, it's 300 amps and 500 volts. So technically 150 kilowatt if you have a high enough voltage system, uh, but at a baseline it should be able to do about 120 kilowatts. I'm not aware of how uh, big the battery system is for this, so I don't know how long it can sustain these faster charges, and I don't know uh, how fast a grid connection is, so I don't know what it can sustain when the battery dies. Uh, the Chatamo charger is rated at 60 kilowatts. I think they have a 160 amp cable for it but the CCS is 300 amps like I said and so uh, I really doubt that it could uh, sustain enough power uh, to max out the CCS. Uh, the, the thing is too, it does appear that this will split power so even though this is technically only a single charging unit it's actually shared between both sides. Of course, it's only one CCS vehicle and only one uh, Chatamo vehicle at a time, uh, but at least that's how it appears to be set up. And again, I don't know if you can actually do 60 kilowatts on the Chatamo and 120 kilowatts on the uh, uh, CCS concurrently, simultaneously. I don't know how that would work, uh, but it's a really interesting concept. I really like the idea of a battery backup system like this to allow higher power. The only thing is, I don't know if it's appropriate at a stop that's going to be as busy as this is going to be. Uh, these seem like they're really great options for rural highways, low cost uh, DC fast charging for rural communities where small businesses can bring in EV traffic that's passing through. But if it sits idle for two, three, four days, six, you know, six days a week maybe even, it's not that big of a deal. I think that's where these stations are going to shine. Uh, one other thing that I noticed, uh, I got really scared because it, it, it accepts payment uh, through the EV Connect network and I can't remember my EV Connect password so I'm going to have to go log in and find that. Uh, but it's got the card reader of doom, it has the NIAX payment readers but um, you know, it didn't seat my chip the first time. I slid the card and it said, use a chip reader. Uh, I, I inserted it again one more time and it said, oh, we can read it now, authorized. So it accepted my payment. I'm actually charging at 53 kilowatts right now, uh, which is good. This means it is actually maxing out or at least maxing out the Bolt EV. So it maybe likely has full power. Um, but without further ado, let's jump right into a site score. All right, so for this uh, Freewire Lodi site, uh, for access, I'm giving it a nine out of 10. And part of the reason is, you know, it, it is just off the freeway. Yes, if you're going southbound, uh, you do have to go past the AM, PM here and then, you know, do a U-turn and come back around. But otherwise, you know, it, it is just literally just off the freeway. This is the same as you'd expect out of a gas station. Uh, and it's it's just right off the freeway. The, the parking spaces are out of the way. Again, uh, with these sort of convenience store, gas station type stops, 
uh, people don't just park here, right? They, uh, they're they here for a reason. Uh, you know, that we're right next to like the car wash and everything else. We're out of the way, out of the way of the storefront. So you're not gonna be competing for parking spaces. And, and then of course, the, the only big knock on this, the why it's a nine instead of a 10 out of 10, is there's no full pull through parking. And you know, you look just over at the gas pumps, everybody can pull through, uh, they can tow a trailer, they can do whatever they want, uh, and they just drive right in, longer vehicles can charge there. Uh, this, you're not gonna be able to do that without inconveniencing someone, having to detach your trailer or whatever. So yeah, this is only getting a nine out of 10 for accessibility. Now for amenities, you know, this is this is great. It's a nine out of 10 for amenities. And th again, the only knock on this is something that I've said over and over again. If gas pumps have covers, electric vehicle chargers should have covers. Yes, you're not standing out here holding the cord uh, like you do a gas pump or anything else. You just plug in, walk away, do whatever you need to do. But this charger, you know, should have some sort of coverage. We're in central California, it gets really hot here. Uh, the car itself should have some sort of coverage. Uh, like I said, just like the gas pumps, there shouldn't be any uh, difference in the way the two uh, pumps, if you will, the energy dispensers are, are treated. So uh, for that reason, it's getting a point knocked off for amenities. But otherwise, it's a gas station stop. You have squeegees, you have trash cans, you have vacuum cleaners, you have a car wash, you have uh, food here in terms of just quick beverages, uh, bathrooms, 24-hour service. And if you're gonna be here for a little while, there are a lot of places to eat that are, you could just walk to, right? There are restaurants behind us, restaurants across the street. It's just a short walk and you can sit down, have a meal, come back, get in your car and go. So all of the amenities that you want are pretty much just here. So yeah, I think this is a strong nine out of 10 for amenities. For site concentration, uh, I'm, I'm gonna knock this twice, right? I consider at this point three chargers per site to be bare average five out of 10. This is only one charger. Uh, and it's gonna get a three out of 10 for site concentration. And that actually is a little bit generous because it's, again, only a single charger, but it appears that these will split power and provide power concurrently. So it's essentially acting like two chargers at once. Unfortunately, right, one of the dispensers is Chatmo, one of the dispensers is CCS, so you can't have two like vehicles charging at the same time, and that's why I'm being a little bit harsh in the site concentration score, because a majority of the time this is going to act as just a single standalone charger, even though it has the ability to split power. So, uh, you know, for that reason, it, it you know, you only have one charger here. There really should be, in my opinion, at least two of these chargers splitting power, uh, making four active plugs at a time, um, and that's bare minimum. This We're off a busy freeway. This is a place that's going to see a lot of traffic. Uh, just a single charger isn't good enough, right? It, it's, it's a very low uh, score, so it's a three out of 10 for site concentration. Now for location, this is a well-covered route. I had no concerns about driving here with less than 20% battery. I drove past numerous DC fast chargers to get here. We're in central California. Uh, but that being said, we're also in a bit of a gap, right? We're south of Galt, which is again, south of Sacramento. Uh, on Highway 99, which is a very heavily trafficked e uh, route, uh, it's one of the best covered EV routes in the world as far as public uh, DC fast charging is concerned. I think there are like 30 or 40, maybe on, as, at this point almost 50 sites between Sacramento and the Grapevine, so about a 300 mile run of freeway and you have hundreds at this point of DC fast chargers uh, between all of the, like I said, the 50 or so sites that are distributed. So this is just adding more on top of that. But it is filling a bit of a gap and every little bit helps at this point. And this just gives another option, another venue that you can stop at, get, it gives you more freedom in your trips. Uh, and you know, it, it is the most heavily populated EV owning state in the country. California, so uh, every charger helps. Uh, but it's getting an eight out of 10 for site location, 
because it, it's just not that important of a location. If this were someplace more rural in California or someplace more rural in the United States that doesn't have coverage, it would go way up in terms of importance. This is a good site to have. It's going to be handy. It's going to be important, just not crucial. So it's an 8 out of 10 uh, for site location. And now finally for speed. Uh, these are always sort of hard uh, to classify in terms of speed because they sit in that sort of middle ground. But I think I've settled on these sort of somewhere between 100 kilowatt and 150 kilowatt chargers. I think I settled on giving them a score of about 7 out of 10 uh, for charging speed. This is sort of, I think, the new baseline, in my opinion, for what charger speed should be. Uh, the current is really high, though. It's the 300 amps of current means you're going to see pretty decent charging speeds, right? It's a legitimate 120 kilowatt. And like I said, in, in many ways, it's very similar to the, the 150 kilowatts, just a hair under them in terms of speed. Uh, the, the, the big thing is though, and why it's getting a knockdown uh, to, to maybe a seven out of 10, is I don't know how consistent the speed is gonna be. Uh, and, and that's because if you're relying on a battery backup system, uh, you're not really necessarily going to see that fastest speed all of the time. Uh, the other thing that would be concerning is for someone like a, a Porsche Taycan owner or any of these upcoming 800 volt uh, architecture vehicles, it looks like this charger isn't going to support them uh, in that way, right? They're, they're, it's, you're not going to be able to charge at the full uh, 300 amps at 800 or 900 volts or whatever the case may be. So in that regard, you're not going to see the same sort of power that you would see even on a, say, 150 kilowatt DC fast charger from BTC Power or uh, Signet or uh, ABB or whatever like uh, EVgo and uh, Electrify America are using. So it, it is a little bit limited in that way, but it's still a really strong, uh, uh, really fast charger. The, the Chatamo is also a little bit restricted. You know, typically you can see Chatamo connections now up to 200 amps. This one's only 160, so it's again a little bit slower. But I think this 7 out of 10 is is a legitimate score for that sort of 100 to 120 uh, kilowatt uh, charging range, where it's a little bit faster than the 50 kilowatt chargers that we see basically everywhere. Uh, but it's not as fast as the fastest chargers that are being distributed. And that brings us to a total site score of 36 out of 50. So it's a C, right? It's a, a strong showing for something that I think is really intended as being a sort of uh, entrance into the market and showing people what they can do. I, I think FreeWire, this is a great example site. I think it's something that a lot of businesses should consider. It's going to keep their overhead and costs low. Uh, it's going to give them the ability to provide a, you know, a very high power solution. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's I'm really impressed with it. The look and feel of it is really nice. Uh, it's fairly large, again, batteries included, um, but otherwise I think it, the interface is nice, the, the look and feel of it's nice, the cord, even though it's a 300 amp cord, did not require me to uh, provide any additional support to get it to work on the Bolt EV, so uh, unlike those uh, Huber Plus Sooner, uh, cables that liquid cooled cables that are very heavy and they can actually uh, I, I'm guessing pull the communicator or pilot pin from uh, a lot of the CCS plugs that we see on a lot of the cars so you have to support the cable this doesn't require that big bonus there so I'm really impressed this is a this is a good uh, a good job by freewire uh, good job by EV connect getting everything connected together though I am gonna have to figure out how to log into it uh, but overall I'm impressed so I'd love to hear what you think. Have you had a chance to use one of these free wire chargers before? Um, do you know of any businesses that are interested in lower cost or lower operational cost chargers like this that could maybe benefit from reaching out to FreeWire, um, EV Connect, and maybe getting some of these units in to draw EV customers into their business? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And thank you for watching.